Hey everybody, Lonnie here. So we're on part eight. We're gonna create a data service on our client side that's gonna consume that API that we've set up on our server side. This is the last part in this series and once we're all done, we're gonna have that chart showing some real data coming from Pi. So I think that's super exciting. Anyway, I hope you've stuck with me so all the way um, through this series because I think this is a really, um, really good, simple example of how to get started creating dashboards. So let's go ahead and flip over to Visual Studio and finish this baby up. So here's our controller that we that we were um, that we had set up, and so the next thing that we want to do is we want to come over and uh, we're gonna we're gonna come back to our application here and. I want to create a, um, a data service, and I'm going to add in a, um, a new folder. And this one, I'm going to I'm going to call this folder um, services. And just like we did with views, we're going to have our data services and all the stuff that goes into uh, data services handled in another folder. And this kind of keeps stuff separate and organized as projects get larger. So I want to call this. Uh, um, we're going to create a JavaScript file, and we'll call this. Uh, data service and um, and then um, within that I'm going to just copy in some code um, really just to keep this video short um, otherwise it would be hours instead of it'd be really long <laughs> so this is this is literally our data service and remember that we set this call up within our browser and uh, we, we, ch we check this call out, KPI, get KPIs, and we know that's going to return some JSON data, right? And then this is adding um, a new type of module called a factory to our application. And a factory is similar to a controller, except its design is to, um, is to not hook up to a view but really to, to live on its own and then, the, and then um, a controller or a set of controllers would attach and, and um, use this factory to get this data. So multiple views like both the production summary controllers would be using this factory. And we're bringing in, a, through dependency injection, we're bringing in an Angular uh, uh, library, uh, HTTP, and that'll allow us to make those HTTP requests. We're setting up one method called get KPIs that's going to be part of this factory called data service. And it literally just goes out and makes this HTTP call to get KPIs. And then that comes back. And then when that comes back, we'll, so we need to make this call from our controller. And then we need to um, take that data and hook it up to our chart. So let's go back over to our um, summary. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and come into our views and we'll go to our summary controller, which is where we're going to try to use this. So we have our chart data here and we have uh, this binding source. So we're still going to use that. And remember, we formatted our data coming out with values and timestamps. So it should be set up it's very similar to how this is. It'll look exactly the way that it looks here. So that makes life a lot easier for us. We really don't have to do a whole lot more. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to bring in, um, just like we're bringing in scope, I need to bring in that, um, that, that uh, factory and we called it a data service. So we'll bring it in right here and then we're going to um, declare it over here. This is dependency injection the Angular way. If it seems a little confusing, uh, don't feel um, don't don't feel alone because to be honest it is a little confusing it takes a little while to get used to but once you kind of get it down there's a pattern to it and um, it's not too bad and the good news in angular 2 this is simplified enormously so I'm really looking forward to angular 2 when it's ready uh, so we're gonna go ahead and then I want to um, if you go back to this view here we had this thing, um, this this directive called ng init, and then we we call this method init. So what happens is when this view loads, it and this this directive, if it's if it's anywhere in the application, and we see um, it will call whatever function is mapped to the um, directive. So we need to go ahead and come into our controller, and we're going to create a method called ng init. Now we need to put that on scope because we're working from the view, right? So we'll go ahead and uh, that's called init and we're just going to create create a method here. Um, 
and I need to call this a function and um, we'll go ahead and create the method. Now within here is where I want to call this, I want to call our data service and get this set up. Okay, so um, we'll go ahead and I'll copy, I'll bring some code and we'll copy this in and, um, and we'll punch it in here. And here's the, here's the data service that we're, we brought in. We're calling get KPIs, which is a method of that data service, which is this guy right here. That's a function. And uh, upon a successful call, the data is going to come back in this variable. And then here, all we're doing is we're just mapping it to that production source, data source. So I can go ahead and delete that. We don't need it initialized anymore, markup data. We can, uh, well, maybe what I'll do actually, I think I'll, um, I think I'll comment that out. Sometimes it's nice if your, if your data, if your API is not working and you just want to work uh, in a test mode um, with some mocked up data, it's nice to keep it around for a while. Um, so anyway, we have, uh, if, if it comes back successful, then, um, then we're going to just map our data right to it because it's ready to go. And otherwise, um, we're, um, if there's an error, we're just not going to have any data. We normally want to display that error somewhere, but we're just trying to keep this example short. Um, literally, that is, uh, that is all there is to it. So let's go ahead and fire this up and see if we actually hit the data source and bring, back, bring that data back. So um, we can see that we have a bit of a problem here, which is actually um, kind of good because I was hoping that we would, um, we would encounter an issue so I could show you some debugging. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna press F12 and I'm gonna see if I have some errors here to help clue me in and why I'm not getting good binding. It looks like the binding from the summary control, summary to the uh, view to the controller is not working. And here it looks like that uh, I probably have a problem with, um, with my uh, data service provider. It doesn't look like it maybe knows what's going on here. And so I did, the, um, I did what I always do and I just, I think I just, um, I literally came over and I forgot to um, add that in our index.html here. So we created this new data service JS, but we never added it. So we need to drag that over. And, um, and then let's go ahead and save that and come back to here to Chrome. And let's try refreshing that and see if we see, um, see some data coming back. Looks like we did get an error here. Um, there was some invalid data. So maybe our data isn't quite, um, um, is not quite uh, normalized. There may be a bad element in there. I'm not really not gonna look into that at this point for the sake of time, but you can see uh, refreshing that, you can see the data, it goes out, it comes back and it gets in and you can see we've got changing values and um, and it's looking pretty, pretty dang good. And, and uh, if you, if you do need to debug this, if you're running into problems, uh, real quick, what you can do is you can come over and up here in our, uh, let's see if I can make this window a little bigger. Let me move this down. Um, you can come over to this under, if you're under sources here, you hit control P, you can look for the file that we would normally be working under. So in this case, this is the uh, summary view um, controller right here, the summary controller. I found that and we could put a breakpoint right here. And then when I, uh, when I refresh this, we know we're going to break into that init. And there you can see we broke into it. And now we're going to call this get KPI service. So you can set breakpoints. I can set a breakpoint here to see when it returns. I press F8. And when the data comes back, we can see the data source. Here's the data source. I can hover over it. I can um, I can open up an object and I can look at it. You know, so there's an object there, and one of the objects it does not like. Um, I'm getting that error, but anyway, you can see we have uh, we have a bunch of objects here, and they all have their timestamp and their value, and um, and then I can press F8 and it can continue to run. So this is a way that you could step through. So if I had if I wanted to do a complete step through, I put two breakpoints here. I could come over to um, Visual Studio and I could go to my um, to my controller, which is on the server side, this KPI controller. 
I could put a breakpoint here and I could put a breakpoint here and I could run I could run through the whole thing now and see it all happen step by step. I could see it uh, when we first call the data service here I'll press F8. Um, now we're in our controller on the server side and you can see that we we've come in okay. Um, I'll press uh, F5 here and that'll take us to the end and now here's all our results. You can see that we've gotten all of those and everything's worked out great. Press F5 and then we'll come back to our browser and then we can see there's the data that came back and then it's going to get um, populated into our data source and then you can see that chart down at the bottom. You can see it come up. So that's how you kind of step through setting up breakpoints using the debugger and stuff like that. I would definitely go in and see what's going on with my data source, see why I'm getting um, this error um, it's coming from the chart uh, control that's sending it out. It's not liking something about it, but it still seems to be rendering the data okay. All right, so that um, really, that, that concludes. So just to um, do a real quick review of what we, what we ended up putting together here is we have this whole um, application. We have our client with our views, controllers, and data service going out to the web API and using the Pi web API to go back and get data from Pi. Um, we have uh, the different components. These are the components that we've set up on our client side using Angular to de develop that web app. And then on the server side, this is the, um, the um, uh, web API 2 router and controller that we used to go ahead and in the Pi system to use the Pi web API asset framework. Uh, which is what the Pi Web API was working off of. If you remember, I navigated through those links and we, we went to the um, AF uh, database. So, um, so that is it. That concludes this series. Um, all the source code will be on GitHub. I'll provide a link below. And, uh, and also, I just want to uh, note, if you, if you do like this video and you like more of these uh, videos, let me know um, what you would like to um, learn more about. I'm, I'm interested in trying some different technologies. I've got a few things in mind that I want to do next. But certainly, if you have a request or uh, of something that you've been thinking about wanting to do and you're not sure, I would love to hear what that is. And if you like this video and you like the series, please, um, please give me a thumbs up below and just uh, click the like and so that um, and, and leave a comment if you're so inclined but that just keeps me motivated to keep doing this. So I'm Lonnie and um, I hope that this has uh, brought some uh, value to you and I hope that you can see that it's not too complicated to get going. It seems like a lot of steps but you know this all together was probably you know a little over an hour hour and a half uh, the entire series and um, and so I think that you know, it, it's not difficult to, to get going on this and you could take this project and you could use it as your starter project for your own dashboard. Okay, thanks, take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.